Hello there and welcome to Technically Speaking. Today, a little bit of a different topic. We're talking about secondhand ECUs. Should you buy one? And when you do buy one, what to look for? Now, in a perfect world, you'd always be buying your Haltec engine management systems as brand new units straight from your dealer, straight from Haltec, so you know exactly what you're getting. But we know that's not always the case. Part of the fun of building your ride is scouring the trading post or Facebook Marketplace or eBay or whatever it might be in your area to get that bargain. So today, we're gonna to go through a bunch of the engine management systems and just give you a few tips about how to buy the right Haltech ECU on the secondhand market. The first thing to check is the visual appearance when you're looking at the engine management system. Something like this, might turn you off at first, and the truth is, I probably wouldn't buy this one. Um, it's clearly been in a pretty bad fire, but it does still work. Things to look at are the ECU pins inside the connector, just to make sure that none of them have been melted from a serious wiring problem, or if the harness is caught on fire, for example, and joined the power and the grounding together, in turn, melting any of the AMP pins here on the engine management system. The screws that hold the ECU in place, Make sure that they look nice, that they're not rusted or they haven't come loose or they're not missing, indicating that the unit might have been pulled apart in some time of its life. Uh, one of the things that we can do while you're looking at it, give it a smell. Burned electronics or anything that has been damaged will have a typical, that funny electrical burning smell. If you do smell your engine management system, it has that funny smell, walk away. Visually, the other thing that you can have a look at is the sticker on the back of the engine management system. This one's got the Haltech logo, it's got Elite Display written on this sticker. We have actually had display units sent in for repair. Some unlucky, savvy secondhand buyer has bought display units that have probably gone missing from display shows that we've done all around the world. So have a look at that. Make sure the serial number doesn't have display written on it. If the engine management system you're looking at does have the actual product name written on it and the serial number, you can email or give Haltech a call. We'll be able to give you the production date, whether that serial number's ever been reported stolen to Haltech, and if it's got the serial number, which is on the back of it, or it is in the software when we go online with the engine management system to check it, if the sticker's been removed from the front of the unit for any reason, or if all the identifying marks are, have disappeared from the unit, we can see the serial number within the software. Sometimes that does happen when people are using the engine management systems in particular racing classes, where there might be some homologation purposes for removing all of the stickers, I'm not really sure, but it does happen. If you let us know the serial number, we can let you know exactly which engine management system it is. So across this side, I'm talking about the Elite range. If I come back here to the Platinum series, my heart's in the Platinum series, I started at Haltech just as the Platinum series was starting to roll out and these are a fantastic unit available in the Sport 1000 and the Sport 2000 series. They're still a fantastic unit that for the money on the second hand market do a fantastic job. Uh, obviously they use an older software package, they use the ECU manager software, whereas all of the Elite series, it doesn't matter when it was manufactured, can all be updated to use the brand new NSP software. So there's bloody good value in getting an older Elite series ECU. The Sport series still has a CAN communications port on the back of it, so we can still use all of the current CAN devices, uh, excluding the keypads, with the Sport series. So we can use like the four channel thermocouple amplifier, we can use our wideband controller, we can use the IC7 dash, so you still can mix and match those CAN devices with the older series ECU. If possible, it's always nice to stretch into the Elite series, if that's possible. Upgrade wise, between the Platinum series and the Elite series, the ECU connectors are the same and the little locating pins inside those are the same. So the harnesses can physically plug in, but there are a very few, there's some small and there's sort of some obscure wiring differences. So be very careful if we're putting a Platinum Series ECU into an Elite Harness or an Elite Series ECU into a Platinum Harness. We will need to do some slight repinning in order to get that running perfectly. So you've scoured Facebook Marketplace, you've found the unit, you've gone, you've had a look at it, you pretty much wanna buy it. What if the worst does happen? What if you buy an engine management system that is damaged, has got an output that's broken, a power supply that doesn't work because it has suffered a wiring problem or it's been in a crash where a wiring harness is burnt 
in its past life. Well, you can send the ECU to Haltech for repair. We do plenty of repairs for stuff that has wiring damage or things like that. Um, water damage is a different story. If the units have been subjected to water, I would say, it just in any electronics in general, steer clear because you never know when that's gonna cause a problem. If you've bought a Haltech ECU secondhand, any of the Platinum or the Elite series, you can send in, there's a small fee to have the ECUs tested. They come back with a report to let you know that they're running fine and they're ready to put in your pride and joy. Saying you get through all of that and you get home with your engine management system and you plug it in and there's a password on it, well, what do we do then? Well, let's have a look. I'll put down this pretty one. I'll pick up this charred one. This is the one I would have bought off Marketplace because it looks like a bit of an adventure. I'm gonna plug my power straight into the port on the front, which has just got our 12 volt power and ground on the top. Then I've got a USB cable here that I'm gonna plug in. Normally on an Elite Series ECU, we'll have our power light and our status light down the bottom that normally light up. On this one, you can't really tell because the charred remains of the case have actually gone over the top of it and you can't see. But if I put that one to the side here, open our NSP software. The ECU is recognized, it starts to go online, it's reading all the settings out, but then it's password locked. So what that means is that whoever tuned this ECU back in the day has set a password on the map so that only that tuner will be able to access the settings, uh, in this case, the data logs and all of the mapping, which is the tuner's intellectual property. They've got a right to be able to do that. But it's a bit of a problem here because in this scenario, I don't know who the previous tuner was. The good news is that, that password is on the map, not on the engine management system. So we can do a factory restore on this. You can do this at home. Anyone can do this just with the Haltech software as long as you've got the unit powered up. So all I'm gonna do here, it's asking me for the password for the map, which I do not have. So I'm gonna click on ignore. When I click on ignore, it's gonna go through and it's gonna hide any of the settings. So for example here, the target Lambda table is password protected locked. Normally it would show me all of the values here now, there's no values because they're all being hidden away, which is within the tuner's right. In order to fix this, we'll go File, Restore Defaults. This is going to wipe the setup that is in the ECU, so the trigger system, how many cylinders the engine has, all of that trigger setup stuff, all of the ignition setup, all of the fuel setup. It's going to erase all of the fuel maps and all of the ignition maps and load it all with defaults with no password. I'm gonna go restore all, accept the use disclaimer. It's gonna write that map into the unit. I believe this is, it's quite an old ECU. This is probably seven or eight years old, give or take. I'll reset it and there we go. We've got a default map in the unit. She's back to brand new. You'll notice that our temperature, coolant temp, air temperature, all of our temperatures are all sort of reading negative values because as you'll be aware, notice here, I don't have a harness plug into the ECU. I only have 12 volts and ground connected to the DTM4 plug in the pocket here. So a nice simple way to power the unit up. To be able to power it up and load a base map or check it on the bench, nice way to do it. Um, the Nexus series powers up directly off the USB cable to do communication, so you don't need to put any power supply at all to the Nexus R5 series. Now that we've done this, we know that that ECU is fired up, there's no check engine lights, there's no trouble codes. I would say that that one, as bad as it looks, I believe that that's ready to go in the car, tune up, and she's ready to rock and roll. Well, you're not entirely ready rock and roll because what if you don't know how to set up your engine management system? Hopefully you've got a popular-ish engine and if I go up the top here and if I go to File, Import, I don't wanna save any of the changes, I can come down here, I've got a whole bunch of maps in here, but if I come down along here to Base Maps, within the Base Map directory, there's a whole bunch of files for standard style engines for GM, Ford, Holden, Honda, Lexus, Mazda, Mitsubishi, Nissan, uh, Polaris, uh, Toyota, Subaru, all the popular Nissans. So 
you can go in here, find a base map, import that into your newly acquired ECU, and that'll give you a good leg up on all of the settings in order to get the thing started and running. So you can get it running at home, check for leaks, check for oil pressure, check the engine's running well and that everything's under control before you take it to the tuners and get it on the dyno for its full tune up. Software wise, it's always gonna be best to have the Elite series as well so that we can get you up to the nice, fresh, new NSP software. Um, if you do end up with a Platinum series ECU, like I said before, this uses the ECU manager software. It still uses a USB cable, which is available on all common laptops today. Uh, the software, Windows-based, it can install on any Windows-based PC. Pretty straightforward, just install it and she's good to go. But updates for this did stop a long time ago. If you end up with the Elite series, like our burned one, I've just downgraded the firmware in this one just to show you what to do when you get the ECU to be able to update it from whatever version it's in because remembering they've been around for a while now, there's plenty of firmware updates available through the time they've been available all the way up to the ones that are getting shipped out of all of our offices today. So it doesn't matter what year model the unit was made, whether it's an Elite 550, 750, 950, an Elite VMS, an Elite 1500, Elite 2500, Elite 1000, Elite 2000, there's so many of these units that all of those firmware versions can get updated to the very current ones right now. So we've just plugged this unit back in again. We've downgraded it to the ESP software just so you can see what to do. Imagine you've just plugged this thing in, you've got it home, you've plugged it in, it's on the older ESP software. All we need to do is come across here, we go to Tools, Upgrade ECU for use with NSP software. We'll click on this. The upgrade helper is gonna go through and have the little green boxes here to say USB connection, I've got it. Power supply, I've got it. The NSP installer, which is already installed in this laptop. If it's not installed in your laptop, it's gonna say not installed and then it'll download it off the internet for you and install it. Then all we need to do is say run NSP. It's gonna shut the ESP or the Elite Software Programmer. It's gonna open the Nexus Software Programmer, updating the firmware in this Elite Series ECU. Once all these bars go across and go green, I always have a huge amount of satisfaction watching the firmware update happen, knowing what's happening inside the ECU when it's doing that is pretty amazing. The second that this gets up to date, that's gonna be the NSP based Elite Series then. Uh, the little light on the front of the unit, you know which software program are you using. If it's got a light blue sort of color, it's probably using the ESP software. If it's got a green light, it's using the NSP software. When you plug in, whichever software version you open, it's gonna tell you which firmware is loaded and then all you need to do is just open the right software if you pick the wrong one. Now that that's loaded and in, we can see that that ECU is now communicating with NSP. We go back, update, put our base map in it like we showed you before and ready to rock and roll. And finally, before you pull the trigger on your second hand Haltech engine management series, please jump on our website and just check the price of any of the Elite series on the website compared to how much you're about to pay for that unit second hand. We often see these units going to close to the retail price of the unit in your area anyway. Our Haltech website does have the pricing in your local currency all around the world, so please check that just to make sure that for a few extra dollars you can't buy a brand new one. Well, as always, thanks for watching. This has been a fun one because I've been waiting so long to showcase these burned ECUs that still work so well. My name's Scott, catch you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, smash that like button. We put out a new video every week and sometimes even two. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more awesome content.